Hi, this is Sonu Bharti and welcome to another episode of TFR Rev by Reckon and we are back to reinvent. I'm physically not there, but Rob is there. Rob, which day is it today? Uh, today it's uh, Wednesday. We're, we're looking back on what's been going on for the first round of major announcements. Um, and, you know, sort of the show has been rolling. Everybody's uh, realizing how exhausting Vegas can be. It is. I've been there a couple of times and uh, I don't enjoy it that much, to be honest. Uh, uh, but today, yesterday, something interesting happened. Google tried to steal some thunder by announcing that uh, you know, uh, their their founders, Sergey and Larry, they are leaving the company, are kind of retiring. What was the impact uh, at AWS? Because that's the only thing you can do if you want to steal any thunder from <laughs> AWS. You have to go to nuclear option. <laughs> I'll tell you, it didn't even move the needle here. Sorry, sorry, Google. Uh, maybe it picked up some news. But in a lot of ways, the news out of Amazon reInvent was not earth-shaking anyway. A big, a big component of what, what we were talking about in the Twitters and, and or in the hallways is that Amazon is, is moved into we are the dominant cloud. We're going to stay the dominant cloud, get out of our way mode. Um, and there weren't a lot of earth-shaking announcements. Not, there wasn't a lot of things that were jaw-dropping. Um, I think we should talk about Outposts, but it, it, wasn't, it wasn't the, oh, my God, they did this. Uh, that we've had mm -hmm. in previous reInvents. Yeah, I have seen this pattern that, you know, most companies don't uh, like, even uh, I'm kind of deviating from the, you know, but like even Apple, you know, they don't make the major announcements, you know, that MacBook Pro 16 was the most anticipated, you know, device. Uh, they, they announced it without any fanfare. So uh, at KubeCon also, we didn't see any major announcements. So I think companies try to reserve these things uh, for when they want it. Because just too much is going on at major events like that, that those, you know, they just get buried under so, uh, those announcements. I've seen that. I've seen a lot a lot less vendor activity in Twitter. You know, we the vendors have not been trying to sort of jump in on the the, the hashtags as much as I had, I had seen. And that's true of KubeCon and in uh, reInvent. Um, but but I actually, you know, there's so much outside of tech news going on in the last couple of years, I, I feel like everything's been muted, frankly, from that perspective. Um, but the message was very clear from, from Amazon. It's, you know, we are the dominant player as much as they, they want to sort of soft sell that. You know, they are in every, in every category, adding and expanding and, and pushing into categories you wouldn't have even thought they needed to push into. There were some announcements, you know, not the major ones, but anything that caught your attention very like, yeah, this is something either, I mean, why is Amazon doing that or, oh, because, you know, I, I don't care about all the announcement that you were expecting. Mm. I'm more curious about something you were not expecting. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's, this is one of the interesting things. And maybe this, we've reached maturity level with Amazon. It's a lot of the things that they were talking about, we've been expecting, right? They continue to pull in and operationalize open source projects. Cassandra was the latest here. Um, I am, I am. Uh, impressed that they got outposts uh, out and delivered. There was a lot of speculation as to whether they would do that. Um, but, you know, as, as a lot of people say, don't bet against Amazon and delivering stuff. So um, I can't say there's a lot of surprises from, from that perspective. Uh, and maybe that's a good thing, right? We're, this is, this is mm -hmm. what IT is supposed to be about. Really, it's about not having crazy surprises. Yeah, it, it should be boring so so and things are stable so you can focus on actually uh, is that chasing the next shiny object. I mean, we have seen that in our communities where they just uh, kind of try to uh, ride the hype, you know, wave, and that doesn't last long. And when that goes away, when it fades away, then, you know, uh, there are like, you know, uh, kind of announcements of demise of XYZ project or XYZ <laughs> platform. Everything is dead. So that's Long good. live the new thing. Yeah. yeah. And, and this yeah. is, you know, we're getting to a point where Amazon is becoming this de facto choice and, you know, and they're doing a good job of messaging it as the way that you should do IT. Um, it's opening up, you know, some wiggle room for us to now position, you know, maybe it's not and, and have the actually have a secondary discussion. Um, but for the most part, the bandwagon is is loaded and, and ready to go. I think that you know one thing that we're still seeing is you know some Amazon trying to figure out how to digest Kubernetes and your and 
they've, they haven't shut down their other container management projects. What they've been doing is Kubernetesizing them, to turn that, um, and making them, you know, more Kubernetes capabilities or Kubernetes integrations into these other container projects. Uh, but at the same time, I, Kubernetes hasn't sort of like crept into everything else that's going on, and I, I haven't seen a lot of uh, operator announcements. Maybe that was all done in, in the KubeCon session. Um, that's you know, so it's sort of been like, yeah, yay, Kubernetes, but we love open source. We do a whole, we use a whole bunch of projects for open source, um, and I, I haven't even seen, and this isn't the show for it, a lot of pushback on Amazon and the way they consume open source. I, there's other other times when that will be discussed more, but you know, this is Amazon's show, and the people here are Amazon fans. Yeah, this is. I wanted to talk about that, but you mentioned it. I was when it was VMware word. VMware, uh, their major focus was on open source, you know, uh, on a stage, you know, Pelican Singer, he said himself, you know, that we had done a very bad job at open source, but they are becoming very aggressive. And if you look at Kubernetes committees, thanks to the uh, Heptio acquisition. And then, you know, I yeah. mean, VMware has been doing a lot of work there. They're one of the biggest players emerging as open source players. They have open source, a lot of stuff, but with Amazon, that is not the case. Unfortunately, I have a lot of friends at Amazon uh, I used to talk to them as press, but now they cannot talk because, you know, Amazon doesn't allow them to talk to press. So it's, uh, they're consuming a lot of open source projects. Uh, when I talk to Linus Torvalds and Greg, uh, they are made also making contributions to a kernel, but they're not very vocal about it. And they, so since you mentioned open source, I'm just curious from your perspective, what's going on there? So Amazon, and this is sort of the, the, the balance here. And it's, it's worth noting, Amazon is a infrastructure company. Uh, re, you know, AWS is, is infrastructure. Fundamentally, they are reselling use of infrastructure. They're not really a software company from that perspective. It's a services and infrastructure company. VMware is, is a software company. And so when they talk about open source and, and, and de delivering projects based on open source, it really is more of a software perspective. They're not trying to manage it for you or they're not selling you hardware. Um, and that, there's a big difference from that perspective. When we talk about open source projects and open source software, that's really software capabilities. And so the two companies are going to have very different approaches because fundamentally, Amazon looks at open source as a way to operate that infrastructure better. That's what they do. That's the value they sell. And so their whole strategy around open source is much more about using and operationalizing and making, making it easier for people to use and consume open source. VMware is much more about selling open source and selling technologies that are around open source. They're both selling motions, right? I don't, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't pretend that these aren't vendor conversations, but the way people interact with their products is very, very different. Um, and to me, it's one of the reasons why open source has been unraveling from a license perspective in the last year. What we have in these cases is that you know, Amazon is operationalizing open source software. That's what they do. And open source software companies are not as focused on operationalizing, making it easier and easier to consume their software, because that typically is where they draw their commercial boundaries. And so we, we have tension on the software side there's no tension at all on the operational side. Yeah, I think VMware may not be an apt comparison here, but if you look at Microsoft Azure or Google, you know, they're also in the same, but they also kind of, they talk a lot about open source, they try to actually, they actually do extra work to, to, to kind of you know, build a kind of an image that they are friend of open source. They, they, they do open source a lot of their frameworks uh, that we have not seen that much at Amazon, which might change, which may have a lot to do with the culture. And as you said, uh, but uh, because they are not like both Microsoft and Google, they do sell software as well, you know, right. and whether it's Android or anything else. So yeah, it could also be a factor. It's it's definitely uh, a mindset component in in how people see what they're what they're delivering. Right. Uh, you uh, yesterday when you dropped on the call, you were going to attend some keynotes. Anything yeah. that captured your attention at, during keynote, anything which was exciting? So for the most part, they were about data, 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 and machine learning. Um, and that's, that's logical. This is where you know, customers need the most help. It's where Amazon makes a lot of money. It's, it really is the thing that, that gets people to reside in Amazon. 
And frankly, you know, data, data storage, data analytics are hard, and so Amazon, you know, creates a lot of value for their customers by producing tools or making the tools that are out there easier. Um, and and so that's that's a big part. You know, it's the same thing we were just talking about. I do think it's worth paying attention to outposts, um, not necessarily as a consumer, but if you're in the market uh, and you're a vendor or a hardware provider or a data center operator. Um, Outposts is something that you've got to be scratching your head, and maybe I should define what it what it is, and and help people. So outposts is Amazon's answer to on-premises IT. So it is a rack of uh, servers that is, are made by Amazon, managed by Amazon, you know, delivered directly from Amazon. They become part of the Amazon region that you are closest to, or that the servers are closest to. Um, they're managed through that region, um, but they have the benefit of being in close proximity to your network. So if you are, need to control where your data resides or if you need to control uh, latency to that storage, but you want to use the AWS APIs for certain services, they only have a subset of services, then Outposts basically will extend the Amazon Cloud onto your premises or Colo or wherever you're going to put it. Um, that's the ad for, for it. Um, most people would call that enterprise IT or on-premises cloud or private cloud. Um, it's, it's not new from that perspective. The new thing is that this is a managed service from Amazon. So they are literally bringing their infrastructure in and it's incredibly vertically integrated um, because it's Amazon hardware, you know, from all, all the way up and down. They manage it. It's their box. You're, you, you don't touch it. Um, from that perspective. Right, right, right. Uh, Amazon is big, it's a very established player, people are flocking to it, uh, they are bringing a lot of machine learning and a lot of new things, the self-driving car, but what are the pain points that people still uh, feel when mm. they do live inside AWS ecosystem? Have you seen any such discussions where they're like, hey, you know, this is still, we are struggling with that and AWS should do something or they have solved all the problems? <laughs> they haven't solved all the problems and they will happily tell you that. Um, you know, they, they do, they're incredibly customer focused and, you know, what they've been building is a, a huge, low, you know, huge spread of point solutions. Uh, nothing in Amazon is really that integrated as a vertical stack. You, when you do any work in Amazon, you're touching multiple services, you're connecting them all together. Amazon has a tendency not to make, you know, they make every service bigger and more featured, but they have a tendency to solve problems by adding a new service. Um, and then you, you wire the services together. And so from that perspective, it's not a single platform, it's a quilt of platforms. Um, and that's good because you can pick and choose what you want, but it's bad because you're working through a whole bunch of interfaces and tools and they have uneven feature lists and you have to know how to wire things together. Um, and it adds a lot of complexity from that perspective. So their platform is, is you know, sort of becoming this giant jigsaw puzzle. Uh, and that requires people to learn how to use it. It's not easy from that perspective. Um, but IT is not easy, so it's, you know, I do think the idea that you're, you, know, you show up at Amazon and all these problems are solved for you is, is a myth. I don't think they, they actually pretend that. Um, they, they're, they're pretty honest about, about what they need to do for it. But they're also not trying to consolidate these pieces together. Um, and so the platform's going to continue to um, expand and grow and, and frankly be confusing. A whole bunch of new names and you know, what does this do, what does that do? Or, you're going to have to figure that out. Yeah, well, uh, either you go to that monolith model where everything is just one big giant application or you just, you know, <laughs> keep adding a small, you know, so that's what they're doing. And that is a big challenge. You know, you are now dealing with 20, 30, 100 different, you know, microservices or <laughs> everything that you're using, trying to put it together. Well, and microservices themselves, which is separate than what Amazon's, you know, Amazon mm -hmm. in a way has created yeah. microservices as a platform, but people decomposing big apps into smaller apps so that their teams can be more efficient are exposing all sorts of new challenges in application development, right? You, you've got to have coordination, you've got to have a service mesh to coordinate all the services, you've got to have observability tooling that lets you monitor all these pieces and figure out what happened when a, a request has to bounce through 10 or 15 services or even two services. Um, 
Yeah, and so we're you know we're not looking at simple stuff. We're looking at you know incredibly complex infrastructure, and, and AWS is no better. I mean, every cloud is is sort of has this problem as they try and compete, but yeah, trying to troubleshoot a problem across AWS, um, it, it can be detective work. You're you're bouncing across multiple services and trying to figure out how a request hit you know three or four different layers of their infrastructure. Um, you have to be aware that you're you're getting into that when you do it, and it's going to be incredibly hard to dis un untangle um, that infrastructure, right? If if you build an application using Amazon services or any cloud services, um, it, it, it's going to be woven through their fabric of capabilities, and pulling one thing out is going to be very hard to do. Uh, thank you, Rob, for the second day. It's not second, the third day of uh, we're losing rap. Cap. It's hard. And, yeah, and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. And hopefully, uh, yes, they want the infrastructure to be boring, but they should make the event exciting. So let's hope there will be some exciting uh, either announcements or some gossips that you gather from the event. So I'm looking forward to seeing you again tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it, Swap. Thanks. <laughs>